Today, I have a, with me a very important guest. He has come from far away, um, from Oyo State to be precise. He is a legal practitioner like myself. He is a politician. He is a member of the Oyo State of Assembly. You're welcome on the show, Mr. Sheyi Adisa. Thank you so much, Latif. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Yes, we're glad to have you here today. Thank you. We're going to be discussing with um, Sheyi about um, youth involvement in Nigerian politics, or your state, you know, case and court, and whether, you know, everybody, this, this trauma for youth participation, is it yielding fruit or not? The ones that are there at the moment, are they even doing anything at all, or is it just, you know, a scheme for the youth to, you know, um, should I say, wrestle power from the elderly, you know, all, all these things. And this election has proven that the, the youth are more interested in the game, they, they, they want to participate in this electoral process. Yes. I, I don't know whether it's the NSAs that failed it, mm. or it's just the worsening situation in the country. You know, mm. poverty level is a bit high, inflation, mm. double digits, mm -hmm. exchange rates, about mm -hmm. 800 naira at the moment. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's these things that is making them, you know, feel the pressure more now, mm. or maybe it's just high time to take over power from these old guys. Um, Sheyi himself is, is, a, is a young man, he's a youth, <laughs> by all indications and all thresholds. And you know, let's, start, let's start by talking about how did you get into the House of Assembly? Was it an easy process? <laughs> uh, being elected is never an easy process, to be honest. Um, but I, I was blessed to have been in the system. So I had worked with a former governor for almost eight years, um, mm. over seven years. I worked with uh, the late Senator Abiola Jimobi, the governor of your right. state. I was his principal private secretary. So pretty much everything paper that came into that office was me. So if you wrote a letter to the governor, I will read it. Mm. Um, if you wrote an email, yeah, you know, and things like that, um, the files that come from the ministries, you know, right. somebody has to kind of break it down so that he doesn't have to read everything. Um, mm. So that was primarily my role you know, vis-a-vis -vis coordinating many okay, other things. Okay. So I did that for him for, for that period. And then um, I had, from a long, uh, a long while and a young age, um, knew I was going to go into politics. Uh, what I didn't see was I was going to get into it at 27. Mm. Um, so, you know, I just kind of kept that at the back of my heart and took it as a mentoring process. So I was learning how to campaign, how to speak with large audiences, how to make your points known how to organize, how to get things done. Mm. And you know, it was like tutelage. Absolutely. And so by 2018, when I went to him and I said I wanted to run, he was shocked. He was like, you, you run, like, you know, cause it wasn't as if it was a planned mm. um, affair. Um, but I, I, at that point I knew I was ready. I knew I wanted to really try and make change. I'd seen many people come in and go out and I knew, you know, we could be better, we could do better. And so. Um, I got his blessings, got his support, and um, yes, uh, went for the elections and, you know, That's won, pretty an interesting guess. story. <coughs> That's pretty interesting. Yeah. And I just said, you know, it's very peculiar in the sense that they have the youngest speaker in the, in the entire country, mm -hmm. Deboy himself. Yes. He's just about 35 years old, I believe. Yes. How, how do you think he's coping? Still well. You think that the other guys in the house are just like, oh, this small boy, or you know, uh, the other people too are young. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> you know. So we have maybe just um, I, I'm not sure. We have up to ten out of thirty two that are over 50, over forty. Really? Uh, yes, we have quite a young house. Um, we have twenty six. We have twenty eight. You know, so we have a young house. Um, and um, you're the center of excellence. So uh, well, pace setter. <laughs> yeah. We set the pace. pace. Yes, we set the pace. Um, <laughs> and. Um, you know, Right Honorable Adibo Edward Ogudoi mm. um, had done nine months in the 8th Assembly. Mm. Uh, he came in by by election. Yeah. And um, obviously, that, that had given him some exposure as well. And he's been able to manage the house so far. It's three, three and a half years. Um, and if anybody knows anything about your state politics, it's, it's not easy politics. Mm. So um, he's been able to manage... Um, you know, other colleagues so far, and uh, yes, we're, we're moving on. I mean, I mean, that's that's good to see. Yes. But I mean, considering now that you're on the opposing side now, because the governor yes. is on PDP. Yes, as you mentioned earlier, you worked with them um, at yes, the earlier. APC. So how, how how is that? How's that? And I'm, I'm sure the house is majorly APC, isn't it? No, it's um, 
27 to the PDP and 5 to the APC. Wow. So um, it's a overwhelming... So you're in, you're in the minor minority. Yes, minor minority, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, but one of the things we have is experience. Right. So I've been in government, you know, almost eight years before then. Uh, we have a former speaker mm. um, that was a speaker in the Fourth Assembly, right, uh, right on River Alarque. Um, we had two of us were local government chairmen before. Mm. Um, so, and then one was a former... Um, a legislator as well in the 8th Assembly. So we have, even though we don't have as many people, we have experience. And um, you easily one of, the, we're the most vocal in the house, to be honest, um, um, putting points across and, and, and letting things be known. So the, it's, the, the it's been, you know, you know it's, with that number, there's not much you can really know. You have your say, <laughs> but, but the majority will always have their way, right, ultimately, right, ultimately, right, yes. Right. So, so what, what, what would you say that this youthful assembly yes. is bringing different to your state? So I think, um, you know, part of what you said, I think more people can draw inspiration from the fact that if these guys can do it, we can do it too. Mm. So there is that um, interest that we've seen, if, you know, particularly in your state. I think from, as an administration, we've tried to be more empirical. So, for example, for the first time, your state did what they call the legislative agenda, which means we wanted to use research. What should we be making laws on? Mm. Don't just make laws like, oh, I feel like we should do things on education. Mm. Like, oh, mini, mini, money, a Greek. You know, so right. we don't, we, we, we try to really find out what people needed uh, through research, through working with um, international agencies. And we found out, you know, poverty alleviation, job creation, those were some of the key security were the key needs of people. We also use tech. We've tried to dip in tech. So, you know, we, you, you can watch us live now on Facebook. You know, we're trying to have applications and things like that. Mm. So um, the hazards and a lot of things, having access to them online, the law reports. Right. So we've, we brought tech in, which is synonymous to young people. You know, young people don't want to have to go to any office to apply for anything. Let me check it online. Absolutely. You know, so, so using tech is also something that I think the that this ninth assembly has been able to do in Oyo State. Then, I mean, the records say that we've been more active than any other assembly, more bills, more uh, motions, Motion. more, you know, so whether you call that youthful energy Exuberance. or, you know, <laughs> but, but, but there's, there's activity going on um, in the ninth assembly. So, yeah, I think um, there's a lot of vibrancy coming from young people. And, mm. that, and that's always been the message. We're not against the older generation. In fairness, they have the experience, they have... You know, some things they bring to the table and we must never knock it off like it's useless. You understand? However, as young people, we're coming to the table not just based on our age, mm. but yeah, young people too that are very exposed, very intelligent, and they have things to offer. And I think, um, you know, that's part of what we've been able to do as an assembly. Fantastic. So, so what would you say that all your students able to achieve a lot of youth participation in the assembly, for instance? I mean, what... what what is different about your state? That, and you would even think that there's more young people in Lagos State, for instance. Yeah. Or, or maybe, yeah, I mean, yeah, Lagos State, for instance. And you, know, yeah. you think, why can't we have you know, the speaker be in his 30s, for instance? Or, you know, so, what did, what did, what did, how did you get there? So I think you know, all of these things, the hand of God is important. What, I, what do I mean by that? Um, Right Honorable Debo Ogundoin mm. only had nine months' experience. Mm. Uh, do you understand? But that nine months was more than any other 26 others. Mm. So that nine months put him ahead of all the others. Mm. And you know, when you want to pay, take a speaker, you take preferably a ranking member, somebody that has been there before. He's going to be leading a house, so he needs to know how things operate. That nine months was 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 critical for him mm. so in another case that may not happen the speaker of lagos is an experienced legislator he's been there for many years Absolutely. he understands the game he understands um politicking he understands legislation so you know they'll tell you if you look at america if you look at a lot of these countries the older you get the more experienced for legislative mm. for executive no executive maximum do two terms you're out yes. but for legislative there is something about you know, whether it's the confidence over time, whether it's people like experience. Experience matters in the house. 
and then most things happen like to, Nancy Pelosi and to cool. exactly mm. you know so they will tell you ranking you know a lot of things come to you as a ranking member because you you you've been there for a while however people at home don't want people staying there too long they tell you leave the place let somebody else <laughs> let somebody <laughs> else go there uh -huh. <laughs> so let, let somebody else go there you know i mean perhaps, perhaps it's because you know people um, don't necessarily have complete faith in this representatives. I, I, I think it's because people have, um, they don't quite understand the role of a legislator. Uh, the role of a legislator is not the role of an executive. Certainly. Three things legislators are supposed to do. First, make laws. Mm -hmm. Second is oversight the executive. So if you pass a budget and you say Ministry of Education, you should do A, B, C, D, E. After the budget is passed, we have the right to now go and check did they do A, B, C, D, E? Mm. That's what we call oversight. Mm. That's the second thing. The third thing is representation. So rain blew off the roof in your community, in your constituency. Students in your constituency don't have enough schools. You come to the house, you represent them on the floor, and then they send that as a motion to the executive, i.e. the governor or the president, if it's the federal system. Right. That's all we're supposed to do. Right. We're not supposed to do boreholes. We're not supposed to do constituency projects. We're not supposed to do any of those things. So why do you keep However, doing those because of the, you know, everything, democracy, you must customize it. Because of the level at which things are in the country and the fact that we're the closest to the people, mm. you know, people can see their legislators easily. Mm. It, it started becoming a need. I, I can't keep telling people back home, hey, I'm making law. People don't want to hear I'm making law. I need these things now. The law you're making, the, not, I, I, I don't yes, really need I yeah. need that boho. I need this, I need that. So that was what led to the clamor of legislators saying, look, it's a, it's a law of supply and demand, you know? They need this, we must be able to meet this. And that's when we started going into constituency projects and doing a lot of those other things. Um, and that's really, that's what's... So basically, we localize our that. democracy, uh, yeah, fine I, I, to our I, I, own I think we have, here. because it, we are not executives. Absolutely. So when people tell me, oh, the road in my place is not bad, you should do the road. I said, do you know how much that road is? It's six billion. Uh, uh, half from, where? Even, from where? I don't even have a budget. Mm -hmm. The executive is the one we pass the budget for, and then they have the right they to execute. Right. They execute they, it, you know, exactly. That's, that's, their, that's their function. Exactly. That's, I mean, that's quite interesting. Yes. So let's take this conversation away from your state and okay. look at Nigeria as a whole. Sure. This youth thing, you know, the, the recent NEC register of voters uh -huh. shows that 70% of the newly registered voters uh -huh. are aged between 18 and 35. Yes. You know, 70%. We are talking yes. about about 7 million new voters That's who are hungry eight, and... 8.7 are here, actually. So, so you, you can imagine, <laughs> you know... It's amazing. And, you know, everybody keeps saying, oh, for instance, they say that, oh, Ashwaji is old, Atiku is old, uh, uh, you know, Peter Obi, the obediency is younger than the rest. <laughs> you know, we want somebody who is more vibrant. Uh -huh. We want a younger leader, uh -huh. you know. But then you see that someone like Shuwore is not getting yes. a lot of followership. Sure. Who is the youngest of sure. the let's say, the most popular candidate, sure. you know. He's not getting that followership. Yeah. And then, why, why is it? Why, 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 why is that the case? And then, look at also vis-a-vis -vis people like Yaya Bello who have been in power. He came into power, I think, when he was 39 or something yes. thereabout. Yeah. And a lot of people don't seem to be impressed about his, mm. about his um, tenure in office. Mm -hmm. So is, is it a thing about the age? Should the age actually matter when picking a leader? You see, age is not an ideology. Mm. And, and, you know, that's why even when I am making a case for young people, I don't stay on the side of age mm. alone. Mm. Do you understand? If you stand on age, it will be knocked off easily. Because just because you're young doesn't mean you deserve anything. That's an entitlement mindset. When we go to people, we say, yes, we are young, but we are also experienced, we're also exposed, we're also, you must add other things. So because somebody is young, is not is never enough mm. do you understand yes it's a criteria it, you know something to add in the bag but it has to be more than that so when i'm saying consider this young person don't consider him just because he's young consider him because he's smart he's brilliant and he's bringing many things to the table and so you know when you're talking about um you know leading having powers i think it's important that <clears throat> and, and i say this um you know if you're going to get a spouse um, you, you, might, you might have many things in your checklist. Mm -hmm. I want him to be tall, dark, this, that, that. You know, and if it's the other way around, you want the lady to be this, that, that, that. I guarantee you, for me personally, that the most important criteria 
for governance is somebody that can do it. You see, when we go on the field, talk is cheap. Everybody can promise, oh, I will build 28 flyovers. I will build 52 bridges. It's cheap. Mm. It's too easy. Anybody will keep saying it. Oh, I will do this, I will do that. You manifest those all nice, glossy. <laughs> I've been in government for almost 12 years. And you will wonder that somebody can have all the money and not perform. Mm. Because there are many factors in government that can make something not work, even if all the fact success factors are there. You have a bureaucracy, the civil service to deal with. You have interests from different areas. You have so many things that makes com um, governance complex. And so if we are picking just based on age, we will miss it. Mm. We need somebody that has done it before and succeeded. For me, that is the most important criteria. It might be tall, it might be dark, it might be handsome, it might be short, it might be... That's not the problem for me. What is most important, if you love Nigeria and you want Nigeria to go forward, somebody that can do it. Do you understand? Has done it, not because, because as I said, if you, you're a legal practitioner, I'm a legal practitioner, and we both go for a matter, mm -hmm. and you say, oh, I will do this, I will do this, and I say, I'll do this, I'll do this. The first thing they're going to ask is, which ones have you done before? Show us your track record, because that's what we can look at. And so, for me, I think that must be part of what we look at in, 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 in our selection process. So, everybody can say whatever they want. I think track record is, is extremely important, not age. Age helps us in the sense of, and, and then another thing I'll look at track record is how many young people did that person use in his government? You know, how many young people did they bring on board? Because governance is more than one person. You understand? How many other young people did they co Do you understand? Um, I, I was given an opportunity, at, opportunity for such an important role at age 27. Mm. You understand? And, and that for me, showed that my principal believed in young people. And I, I was not the only young one, but he believed in young people. And so when you are extreme people, how many young people did you use? You know, because none of them is under 50 as it were. All these people, well, not all the main, let me not say, because I'm not sure how old she was and some of the other contestants. She was about 50 plus. But so none of them is exactly youth in the sense of the word. But how many young people have you worked with? How, what's your record? I think that's, that's for me, one of the things we need let me just, to do. Let, let me just ask you outrightly. So you, yes. you think that I'm, um, Itinubu is the best candidate of them all? He has the best records. I mean, I, I, oh, I, you, know, you, know, you know all these guys, you said, so, you said so, best record, yes. look at the antecedents, this yes. and that. Yes. The four. Uh, it's interesting that that was the person you Because you, 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 you believe. Because you are yeah, the NPC No, because member. that means you believe that that's the person that has the best record. No, no, record. you're the NPC man. I, I just heard no, you. What, no, it's not. Look. And, and, and I'll tell you what I'm driving at. Sure. You, you just said that you should not have the, you should not have, you know, record, antecedents, yes. this yes. and that. Yes. The four yes. candidates all have been in position of power sure. at a point or the other. Okay. The three of them have been governors. Uh -huh. The PDP man has been vice a minister. Yes. Uh, sorry, a vice, vice president, president yes. for eight years in this country. So sure. they all have track record. Yeah. And in their track record, they have good and bad things in their sure. track record. Absolutely. You know.